Hi guys and welcome back. Today I wanted to do just a fun art challenge. So I decided to do, I believe it's just called the 10 minute challenge and you've probably seen it around. It's been around for at least a year, I think, if not more, but it's where you draw one image in 10 minutes, then the same image in one minute, and then the same one again in 10 seconds. And yeah, uh, I, like you can see, I had the colors mixed up already because I'm working on watercolor paper and I also have my ballpoint pen. Before starting this, I did a few little tests to make sure that the supplies that I'm using, that they would all be pretty compatible, that the ballpoint pen wouldn't start smearing into the watercolor and all of that. So I did want to make sure that once I started with the timer and I started working on this, I had everything prepared and I didn't have to like mix colors together because that would, I know, eat up a lot of my time. I <laughs> sit around and mix paint over and over again so much when I'm working. I realize that that's like a huge one time sink, but also kind of a waste of paint because I change my mind and kind of mix them around. Uh, but anyways, I, I uh, tried to think of an idea before diving into this, which is usually a good idea before you start drawing anything, I think. But I uh, wanted to just draw a few things that are really comfortable with, I guess, since I'm, I'm pretty strapped for time. So I wanted to do kind of a traditional Danica sketch and uh, that's where she has long swooping hair. She's looking straight at the camera, which is a really boring pose, but I am not great at the other poses or of like three quarter and profile. I, I think profile's not too bad, but but I wanted to give myself as much of an advantage with a short time as possible. So I chose straight on. The hair, all that, I did want to make sure that there were some interesting details, which you'll see in a bit. I kind of planned it out into my head <laughs> before I started this. And I did do a lot of testing with this ballpoint pen. I've been really, really enjoying sketching with it lately. So I, I kind of wanted to do one like this where I could do the initial sketch and the more refined final version all with the same tool because I, I wanted to be able to go into this and make it as efficient as possible knowing everything that I'd have to do for it. So, so using a ballpoint pen, like a, a cheaper version like this, is really awesome for sketching actually. I, I kind of learned this in in college actually. We had to do a few assignments where we had to do it in ballpoint pen because you can't erase and it's a lot more liberating to be able to just go in and work on it and do the best you can and then move on to another one. So so yeah, I, I've been really loving this pen. I got it at my gym and it's like the perfect ballpoint pen. I've struggled for some reason to find the right kind of ballpoint pen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm starting to realize that I'm taking a little bit of too much time on all these little details. Uh, this is kind of an eye opener overall. The whole project, I think, ended up being something that uh, showed me that I work a lot slower than, than I think that I do. You know, in the moment when you have all the time in the world, it's it kind of slows down. You think that you're you're doing something relatively fast and quick and sketchy. And then when you look at the time, and this actually happens to me all the time when I'm working, but I will look at the time and realize that that half an hour sketch that I was working on was actually an hour and a half. And <laughs> I spent a lot more time than I thought, which I think in a lot of ways is more of a good thing than than not. I think that it's it's one really awesome to be able to just get sucked into working on a piece to the point that you kind of lose track of time. But also clearly I need to spend that much time on the sketch to make it right. So if I'm thinking about it and saying, oh, I really should have gotten that done in, you know, a third of the time. Uh, oh yeah. Anyways, at this point, I'm really like realizing that I, uh, I only have six minutes left to finish all of this and do the colors, which is a big part of what I wanted to get into this. So I have to hurry up and finish the little details, the finishing details, I guess, to, to make sure that she's grounded out on all sides of this piece. That was one thing that I, I wanted to try to make sure that it was still sort of composed within the, the parameters or the dimensions of this paper. I didn't want her to be too, 
too unfinished, I guess, where she didn't really look like she could be a piece all on her own. And that's kind of what I loved about this is that while it's really quick, in the end, I wanted it to feel like just a quick mini painting. Okay, so yeah, I, uh, I just need to refine and clean up things. I did have planned and I had all of my, like I said, I had all of my tools ready to go, but I had my micron pen right close so that I could do darker eyelashes and eye details. I have a feeling though that th this will not be a step that I'll be able to do in the other, in the next shorter versions, that this is a little bit of the extra detail that I can put in with a lot more time, but, but it does go a long way to really just make the eyes pop. This is actually something that I like to do in almost all of my pieces anyways, is that even when I have softer colored line work, I usually like to go in with an almost black or black for around the eyes. I just really love having very contrasted, sharp eyes. And yeah, this is the point where I kind of I lost where my brush was and I couldn't really find it. And yeah, and also if you're noticing, I'm, I'm kind of switching between past and present tense, which is not on purpose, but this is all just remembering in the moment because I did not do this voiceover as I was doing it. I know, I know that's how everyone prefers to watch them and do them, but, but I didn't. I wanted to just focus on drawing. I don't know. I, I know that other people talk about like, how they think while they're working and they think about, okay, I need to do this now and this isn't working. And I just like totally blank in the brain when I'm drawing. And I don't know, maybe it would help to, to vocalize more of my thoughts and ideas to my own brain. But, but yeah, mostly it's more like a silent intuition of what I need to do rather than a direct path or an exact thought in my brain. But yeah, I think probably the part that was the most uh, frustrating for being a time-consuming step was when I had to wash off my brushes. And the thing is, is that I really only have three distinct colors in this, really. So I could have had three different brushes going, but I, I didn't really plan that ahead well enough. So I just had to wash it off and bring it back and uh, deal with that wasted time. And it's uh, it's actually something that I'm really kind of bad at. I think that I rinse off a brush well enough and then I go to use it on a completely different color and it has some of it still in there. So, so it's kind of counter to what I've been trying to train myself or I want to spend more time washing out my brushes on paintings that I have all the time in the world. But in this moment, I just want to get to the next thing. So I had to cut myself off and let, not let myself rinse to the proper amount. But, but I do think once I added that pink, it really helped this little piece of artwork start to feel a lot more finished. It goes a long way having like this completed on all sides look so that there's color everywhere and... Yeah, I think that was the big deal. And now since I only have like two minutes left about, it was really crunch time to try to get in those last skin details, which is kind of funny because when it comes to doing actual full illustrations, I almost always start on the face because that's what I'm super excited about painting. But this ended up being the very last one, which is also kind of opposite of what you really should do with watercolors. You should start with the lights and then work your way through the values till you get to the darkest. But, but yeah. Also, I, uh, I started getting a lot of bleeding from one color to the next, which it should have been really obvious that that would end up happening when I'm working with watercolors like this and I'm working with colors right next to other colors they're going to bleed. And I, uh, I went really close to certain areas, like right there on her eye, where in my brain, I just completely forgot that they're still wet because I'm constantly drying things with my heat gun when I'm working on most of my pieces. And that was when I realized that my heat gun was actually not plugged in, which really was very frustrating because I knew I only had what, like 40, 50 minutes, seconds, there we go, seconds left. So I didn't have time to plug it in, but that eye area was just bleeding all over and I wanted to get this really crisp iris and, well, it was the white of her eye, but I wanted it to be dark. 
and I could not <laughs> because it was just a puddle of water at that point and I couldn't dry it out and I couldn't sharpen it up so I just had to suck it up and it ended up being a lot softer than I thought so yeah I, I guess when I prepared my tools I didn't really prepare all of my tools well enough and then we're like down to the last couple of seconds and I was just grasping for what few things I could do and that was to add just a little bit more contrast in the darker areas of her hair and that was it for the 10 minute one. So now we get to go on to the one minute piece of artwork. In between, I did actually thoroughly dry the first one so that I could lay my hand on it and not smudge it around. And this one, oh, I knew it would be tense. I knew I would underestimate how long it took me to draw things. So I tried to just like right off the bat, just throw the big main details down quickly so that I could just go for it. And I ended up drawing her eye like really abnormally big. It did not match the other one well at all. I was not giving myself any time to plan out her face. It was just like all muscle memory on, on the first face that I drew, which I think was a good thing because if I took any more time than that, and this was right when I was like, holy crap, I really have to get this down or I'm not going to get any color done. But yeah, I just had to move fast. And then we had like 13, 12 seconds left and I still didn't have the pink on there or the dark eye patch. And I really wanted those to finish it off and to give it that impact and to connect the two. And oh, that was the final. <laughs> I'm very glad that I got the pink in that. I was, I was afraid and I do think it needed it. And yeah, I just shuffling things around a little bit. I... I did, again, dry this out first, and then I put an actual color on each of those brushes like I showed, like I kind of wish that I had for the beginning. I just made sure that they were loaded up with color, so I had my pen in one hand <laughs> in each color in the other, and that was it. I couldn't even get to the pink one. I wish that I had, like, gone in with two brushes at once that would have been pretty impressive but but I kind of enjoy the splatter effect it gives it a lot of life and energy to it but that's about it for this I had a lot more fun with this little challenge than I thought I would it was really a, just a nice reminder that I don't have to take things too seriously and that I can do things that are just for fun and enjoyment I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays so I'll be back next Saturday with another video and I also have a link down in the description that can take you over to my art shop if you'd like to buy an art goodie over there. I also have a link to my Patreon, which is a place for exclusive content and a great place to help support this channel and the artwork that I do. And that is, that is about it. That is it. So I will see you guys on my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then.